Some HTML elements have attributes. For example, a link has an href attribute, a class is an attribute, and then if we look at forms, they have lots of attributes, the form element itself, and also the input element. We have type, name, ID, and other attributes. We can use these attributes with CSS in order to target things in the document based on the attributes that they have. So where this is really useful is if we're styling up a form. So I've got my form here, you can see this little form on the page. Now if we just target the element, so input, and perhaps I'd like my form fields to drop down to the next line. And I could just do that by setting them to display block. So that has the desired effect with these fields here, but it also drops this checkbox down onto the next line as well. Well, it would be more ideal to be here, wouldn't it? So I can fix that by using an attribute selector. So I can say type equals text, and that does the text one. And I've also got an email one here, so let's do the same for email to keep this simple. OK, so that deals with those two. So with a form, there's lots of different things you can target in the form to change how that displays without having to go and add a class to every single form field. So here we're just doing a really bare match on the string type equals text, type equals email. We can be a bit more clever with these attribute selectors. Let's have a look. Now one thing we can do is we can select from a list of values. Now as a very simple example, I have classes here and I've got class equals box on this paragraph and class equals box alert on this one. Now if I use a simple attribute selector here, so that's added the grey border just to this uh, box here because it's only matching if it's if the class equals exactly box. What I'd like to do is get box and also box when it's in a list of classes. And so to do that we just add a tilde character here. As you can see that now selects both of them. We can also select a value that starts with a string. So here I've got a list of links and we've got HTTP links and HTTPS links. So we're looking for the href attribute and we want it to start with HTTP and do something. So you can see that that is now getting everything that starts with HTTP and that includes HTTPS because that also obviously starts with HTTP. If you only wanted HTTPS you could just do that. Uh, as you can see that's not getting the link which starts with uppercase HTTP and that's because they're case sensitive by default if you want to change that. Add I at the end and that will make it case insensitive and it will get your HTTP as well. We can also select a value that ends with a string. So these links end with .com. So let's change that to .com and to say ends with, we just use the dollar sign and we get .com. That's not obviously catching .com with a forward slash or .com with a slash and a page name. If we wanted to do that, we want to look for a value that contains a string, contains the .com string, and so we use the asterisk there. Finally, there's a little trick that is useful in a very specific use case. If we look down here, we've got these spans with language, NUS, NGB, and there's a, an attribute selector that matches these. So we're looking for lang, and we use pipe equals n for English and that gets both NUS and NGB so we're looking for the string directly followed by this dash here. So that's your attribute selectors they're really useful and can save you a lot of trying to add classes around your document 
and they can allow you to target things uh, based on the attributes that they have rather than just the bare elements.